What's the word, y'all? I have no way to prove this. But this feels like the best race to the end of the NBA regular season ever. With a week left in ball, the only thing we really know for sure is that, well, we know all 20 teams is going to be in, but we only know that the Celtics are the one seed. Everything else technically is up for grabs as we get through the last two to three games of the year. And that is unfathomable. Is that the right word? That is something I cannot believe. Adam Silver is has been one of the better commissioners amongst the major sports. The best thing we're going to look back on Adam Silver's career and say he did right was enforcing the plan. It was a crazy idea at the time. NBA players such as LeBron James and so on and so forth said it was a bad idea. And now I can't even imagine the NBA without it no more. The one thing that we sacrifice is like crazy trade deadlines. But hell, two years ago, we saw Kevin Durant get traded, you know what I'm saying, at the, at the deadline. But for the most part, teams are pretty okay with competing. And that's how we get to the point that we are now. About two weeks ago, I was going through this on my podcast. And I said, hey, we don't know for sure what's going to happen, but let me make some predictions. And what I said in that episode is that the Milwaukee Bucks have practically secured themselves as a two seed. That was before they decided against winning. Lost to the Knicks, that's excusable, even though they had a pretty big lead. The Knicks are a good basketball team. But actually, it's not excusable anymore. Um, they lost to the Raptors, who had one of their better games in the last month. And the Raptors were losing, what, 15 in a row before this? They lost to the Grizzlies. They lost to the to the Wizards? I thought they were secured at the two seed. And though they're still there right now, anything can happen if they play like this. And at the end of the year, they got Celtics. Uh-oh. They got Magic. Uh-oh. They got Thunder, and they got Magic. Anything is in play because the Magic are the three seed. And they play against the Bucks two times for the reign of the season. Again, I would still probably bet money that the Bucks are going to end as a two seed. But it's not secure anymore because these teams face off two more times. And that's just if we care about the Magic because the New York Knicks are here too. And now they have not been playing phenomenal ball as of recently. They even lost to the Bulls, um, which is not ideal. But they still have to play the Bulls two more times this year. And again, the Bulls are not a very good basketball team. Also, they do have the Celtics. And that game's going to matter a ton for the Knicks. The Cavs also have been playing bad basketball of recent. But still, they are in play to, to host the three, the three game. The 3 6 game. They're, they're in play technically. The Pacers are in play technically. This all makes no sense. And I cannot express to you how important it is for some of these teams to end up as the 3 seed. Because the last thing you want to do, and I know majority, if not majority people, there are a lot of people that are dismissing the Boston Celtics. Oh, we've seen them be good before. They always come up short, so on and so forth. I'm not one of those people. If I am one of these teams fighting for seeding, I am trying to stay away from the 4-5 matchup because that means I have to play against Boston more likely than not in that second round. I want everybody else to beat up on Boston before I get a chance to so they can be depleted or whatever, whatever. So finishing as the three seed can be super great for your outlook to make a conference finals appearance, to even make an NBA finals appearance. But I say that, that you want to get the three seed. But hell, the three seed could potentially get you to 76 who ain't lost a game since Joel and B been back. Shout out to Tyrese Maxey for that master class yesterday. Like, there is no easy route. And this is one of the first times in, in the Eastern Conference, at least, that we can say that for the majority of my life <laughs> as, a, as a guy that's been following the team in the Eastern Conference. The Eastern Conference has been a, a, a cakewalk for the top team. It was LeBron majority of the time, but since then, it's been pretty much a cakewalk. This is not one of those years. Though, even though the Celtics are 62 and 16, the third best net rating in the history of basketball or something like that, there is no easy path because they could potentially see the 76 in the first round if they stay in the plan. They could potentially see the Miami Heat in the first round who beat them last year. And though the Heat have not looked amazing, I'm not going to discredit that completely. So there is no easy route anymore. This is one of the few times where the Eastern Conference feels as competitive as the West. I mean, maybe. Maybe the Boston Celtics just dominate everybody because, again, they do have a 15-game point, 15 game lead against everybody. But, again, at least we got people talking about the first round of the Eastern Conference, and that has not been the case since 2018. Every single other year, every single one of those series ended, ended up in four or in five, at least over the last uh, five years or so. 2018 was the first time we saw, or the last time we saw a seven-game series in the first round for the Eastern Conference. Out West, they always fight. <laughs> they always fight. We ain't had that out East, really. Speaking of out West, I mean... Wow. <laughs> what could we really say? Uh, the Lakers ended up losing last night to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Anthony Davis left with an injury, and then um, LeBron James wasn't playing at all. So uh, yesterday they were at the 7-8 matchup, which is huge for them. I do want to say the Lakers need to do everything in their power, which and they've been playing great basketball. They've would been one of the hottest teams in hoops recently. They need to do everything in their power to finish as a 7-8 because, again, you just don't want to have to win two games, get in. It's a tough, tough route to do that because they're not trying to just get in, right? The Lakers have notoriously been a team that's trying to compete for a championship. So getting in is not enough, but having one game to get in and potentially going against 
I don't know if the Lakers fear any team here other than the Denver Nuggets, right? I don't know who I would pick in any of these series. I'd probably go with the higher seed in most of them. But I, it makes me think, if the Lakers go against the Timberwolves in a seven, I'm thinking about that. If the Lakers go against the Thunder in a seven, I'm thinking about that. Considering the Thunder are beat up right now, I don't think anything has been uh, like a, a long-term injury. And the Lakers have played them very, very well this year. Right? The Pelicans had a huge win last night against the Suns. And the Suns were playing good ball over the last couple. The Suns are, out of the 20 teams, they're the most confusing team to me. Because obviously with the top-end talent, they should be looked at as contenders. But then again, I've watched them a lot. And then they don't. And then they go out and they beat two really good teams back-to-back. -back. You're like, oh my God, here they go. And then they lose to Zion and company. Now, granted, the last time they played against the Pelicans, the last couple times, it was the Devin Booker show. But still, I don't know what to think about them. And that's... That's hard to say with a week left for the season, uh, but it is. The 5-4 matchup is not set in stone just yet, but is as close to set in stone as it can be. Dante Exum hit a huge shot last night. Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic both were phenomenal. And then the Clippers, uh, Paul George, fourth quarter takeover, kept them right there. And they're on a the three-game streak. And they haven't looked great, great lately, but they're starting to turn it up a little bit. Here's a site called PlayoffStatus.com. As it says, that the Celtics are 100% the one seed. And then it's got the Bucks a 41% chance to keep the two seed. Again, that makes sense to me. The Magic still have a 26%, but look, it's saying that they're assuming that the Magic is going to end up probably 3-4 range. The Knicks still have a 12% chance of the two seed. It's unlikely, most likely ending up at 3-4-5. Like, everything is still up for grabs. Even this one, even though it says that the Hawks have a 92% chance, for a lot of this, the Bulls last Hawks matchup over the last two weeks have been flipping back and forth where the Hawks were a half a game behind the Bulls a ton. And they look like the Bulls are probably going to end up with that nine, which means they can host a playing game. Congratulations. Their center is an 18% chance for the 76ers to get up to six, which again is something that they want. Um, especially if they can see the magic, a young team that's still trying to prove themselves in the association. Like uh, your Joel Embiid and company probably want to see that, even though their defense is phenomenal. And I ain't even looked at out on the west side yet. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see what this say. Yeah, nothing is really safe. 55% chance of the Timberwolves keeping it because I think they have the tiebreaker against a few of these teams, so they're probably going to end up as that one seed. But again, it's not set in stone. The only thing that we say for sure is that, again, this Clippers slash Mavericks matchup is probably going to happen at a 98% chance and a 97% chance they keep it. The Lakers, a team that we talked about early, earlier, has a 23% chance, or you add that, they have a 35% chance to end up as one of the top teams in the plan, which is interesting. And the Warriors, low-key, still got a chance to get that nice seed because they've been playing good ball. The tough part about this is that if you are the Lakers or even the Mavericks or, or anything like that, you winning eight of your last 10 or nine of your last 10 hasn't been able to hoist you up because everybody's winning. The Wolves are 7-3 in the last 10. The Denver Nuggets 7-3. The uh, OKC, again, no shade, no J-Dub for a lot of this. So 5-5. Five and five. And then you got the Suns 7-3 in their last 10. And the Warriors 7-3 in their last So it's not like the, the, the Lakers are like, we want to get to the 7-8 matchup. But the Warriors are still winning basketball games too. And they right on our tail. There's no wiggle room for anybody. And I love it. Tonight we have zero games. Because the NBA hates to compete with the national championship game. It's smart because... Are you watching the National Championship game? I probably, I'm probably am. I quickly want to go through of the last week of the season, the most important games, and then we'll call it an episode. This game right here for the Bucks, huge. This is Tuesday night, huge game on national television. This game right here is huge for the Kings and the Thunder, technically. Like, all, like even this game versus the Wizards, I won't call it huge because they're a 16-point favorite, but like a, a big game. You cannot lose that game. But this one, huge game that you need to be watching. Suns Clippers, huge game for the Suns to stay out of that play-in. And then Warriors Lakers, huge game as well. And that I didn't even look at like like both of these games are important. I wouldn't say huge because a big favorite to the to the better team, but you cannot lose these games. All the three of these games, you cannot lose them if you're the top team. But it's basketball. Wednesday, this is the game right here that I've been talking about. Boom. Uh, you got to see that one. You got to see this one. And you got to see this one. Three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back bangers on Wednesday. Thursday has Pelicans versus Kings, which is important. Again, this game, all the all, all the remaining Bucks games are important, okay? Every single one of them is important. And then another Suns versus Kings game. Saturday, we got nothing. And there's Bucks versus Magic. And that's kind of it. So, again... I have never been as invested in the last week of a season as I am right now. It's been a beautiful thing for our game. Cannot wait for the play-in. Cannot wait for the playoffs. Let me know what you think. Give your predictions of the teams that are going to stay, that are going to leave. You let me know.